we have a former state legislator from many moons ago. He's also currently a first selectman in Putnam, Connecticut, up in the northeast corner of the state. He is a strong advocate for Second Amendment rights. So please help me welcome Doug Cutler from Putnam, Connecticut. Good afternoon. Brothers and sisters in liberty, we find ourselves here today not because of defeat, but because of victory. If it weren't for people just like us that stood on perhaps this very ground over 200 years ago, we'd be like everyone else from virtually every other country on the planet, disarmed and at the mercy of anyone intent upon forcing his will on the masses. We, however, are not the masses. We are Americans. We are not disarmed, and by God, we will never be disarmed, so long as the birthright of freedom... And we will never be disarmed, so long as the birthright of freedom burns in our hearts like it did for our fathers and mothers that went before us. Make no mistake, the victory the first Americans purchased has lost a great deal of its value due to the inflation of governmental intrusion in our lives. It is time, no, it is beyond time, to recognize that this last greatest bastion of individual liberty, the United States of America, teeters on the brink of darkness. A government that once was formed to promote and protect natural God-given civil rights that have existed since the beginning of man is now used as a weapon to destroy those rights. A government that was created of, by, and for the people is now used as a battering ram against we the people. When we exercise the right to free speech, we are targeted by the IRS. Our privacy is violated every day when our cell phone data is collected and stored in NSA computers. Our homes and lands are stolen and given to private developers, courtesy of the Supreme Court. We are harassed and criminalized simply for exercising the right to keep and bear arms that is enumerated in both our federal and state constitutions. With freedom like that, who needs tyranny? Our ancestors are watching us, sitting in the gallery of history, waiting intently for their descendants to make a stand of their own. They are wondering if we have the fortitude to gather on village greens like they did so many years ago. They were ultimately forced to pay in blood when men with guns were dispatched to seize arms and ammunition from their communities. They paid the cost because they understood the consequences of complying. We might not be standing here today had they done otherwise. We have been conditioned since childhood that we are great because of our democracy. Hogwash. It's our commitment to freedom that sets us apart. <laughs> democracy is three people voting on who gets to be the slave. Liberty is having a Second Amendment to fall back on when the other two decide you lost. While America was never intended to be a democracy, as we've come to see, our representative government can be corrupted just as easily as any other. No, we are great because we were forged in the freedom of the individual to live and worship free from interference and generation after generation protected that liberty with force and threats of force. Our forefathers understood that without the right to keep and bear arms, there is nothing standing between a free people and the wolves of oppression. Those that sit in seats of power today are no more allowed to take our rights away than those who ruled 200 years ago. No legislature or court can morally or lawfully deem a man or woman free or slave, and neither can they deem any one of us standing on this ground a criminal simply because we keep and bear firearms. 
Should the government order its weapons to be trained on us because we own firearms, as Hillary Clinton is so fond of saying, what difference at this point does it make if those holding the guns are wearing red or blue? The intended outcome is exactly the same, and just because the pen that wrote the order is on this side of the Atlantic Ocean doesn't magically make confiscation and imprisonment for owning guns justifiable or legitimate. Fellow brothers and sisters in liberty, we all must decide where our line is drawn. Will we finally understand, just like Captain John Parker on the Lexington Green and Rosa Parks on a Montgomery bus, we have the power to say, no! It is up to you and me whether our liberty dies with us, leaving our children and their children's children to face the cold steel of government oppression without the tools our fathers sacrificed so much for on our behalf. Which future will we give those that follow? Will we enjoy the fruits of someone else's victory only to now surrender because we somehow believe our lives are more valuable than those that fell so we could be free? Those that went before us are watching and those that are yet to come are waiting for our answer. Ring the Liberty Bell and ring it loudly. Give our, ch our children the chance to deliver speeches on this very ground 200 years from now, proclaiming our victory. Stand your ground. Don't fire unless fired upon. But if they mean to have a war, let it begin here.